every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, and thank you for joining us on Call TV News at 7. I am Frank Omalape. I hear some of the stories we're filing at this time. Members of the All Progressive Congress in the House of Representatives have staged a workout after they failed to get their colleagues to debate the controversial 9.3 million US dollar seized by the South African authorities. The bid by the opposition to force the debate on the matter failed after Deputy Speaker Emekai Hadiha ruled that a voice vote went in favor of legislators who were opposed to the motion. APC members immediately worked out on the House. We have more details in our subsequent bulletins. I'll put the question on this motion because I've said we're not going to debate it for reasons cited by Honorable Kau. We'll not debate it, so I'll just put the question. If the motion is carried, we'll refer to the board committees. My dear colleagues, those in favor of this motion say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Aye. Then let's have it. Nigeria's senators are seeking adequate sanctions for owners of collapsed buildings in the country. Majority of them blame corruption and weak legislation for the rising incidents of building collapse in the country and demanding action against owners of such structures. This was the consensus among senators while debating the motion entitled to the alarming rate of building collapse in Nigeria, moved by Senator Abdul Mumuni Hassan. The leadership of the Senate, however, directed each committee on land and housing to organize a public hearing on the issue. Deputy Senate President Ike Kwaremadu, who presided over Tuesday's plenary, expressed disappointment with government agencies charged with the responsibility of regulating the construction industry. He also lamented that the death toll from the collapse of a building owned by the synagogue church has climbed to 115. Unknown gunmen have attacked a Dogo police station in Ajakutu local government area of Kogi State with dynamite in an attempt to loot the armory. They were, however, repelled by the policemen and juicy. The attempt by the hoodlums to cut away arms was aborted as the police successfully evacuated the armory from the station. The attack, which was carried out on Sunday with heavy dynamite, set the building on fire, according to a statement by the first public relations officer, Emmanuel Udukwa, on Monday in Abuja. The police says no casualty was recorded by the men on duty, while some of the hoodlums escaped with bullet wounds. The police added that the area has been reinforced, while frantic efforts are ongoing to track down the fleeing gunmen. The police appeal to members of the public to report anybody seen with bullet wounds to the nearby police station or uh, other security agencies. A security source has confirmed to Call TV News in Abuja that the authorities are investigating the alleged killing of Boko Haram leader Bubakar Shekau in Bati. Reports had filtered out from Bernu State at the weekend that one of the corpses recovered during one of the battles from Konjuga looked like the Boko Haram leader. 
but a senior security personnel who doesn't want to be identified has now acknowledged that a top insurgent commander was shot and killed at Kondugan on the outskirts of Aidegere. He added that the features of the terror leader have been compared with the recovered corpse to determine whether he is the same that had been appearing on videos. The Department of State Security had always insisted that the Shikao seen in recent videos is an imposter. He claimed that the real Shikao was mortally wounded in Batu at least one year ago. Now, the Nigeria military and the Cameroonian counterpart have been laying claims to the alleged killing of Boko Haram leader Ibrahim Shikao. The situation has generated reactions from Nigerians. Speaking on a flashy program called Digest, public affairs analyst Balazaka says the military should not be struggling to convince the public and will kill the Boko Haram leader. He advised the authorities to focus on boosting the morale of the troops. When you look at accounts now, you know, of, of the two different uh, forces of the two different countries, yes, it's good to, 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 to show your dexterity and creativity, but this is not the time. We are still on, it's not yet El Dorado. We are still on the path to achieving total victory. What, like, like, like he rightly said, what people should be interested in now is that mo moral booster from wherever place it, it, it came, it should be sustained. And if possible, we should up the moral booster. It could have been by way of in incentives. It could have been through data gathering. It could have been through a system where both sides of, 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 of the continent or these countries are, are just getting tired. It's possible that they are seeing depletion in their total or general economic well-being and they feel we need to confront this monster. A political analyst, Razak Olokoba, urges the Nigerian military and people in the northeast to be more proactive and vigilant so as to avoid further attacks by the insurgents. Instead of celebrating the death of Sheikha, if he has actually died, what we should be looking at is how we are actually going to end insurgency, what led to it in the first instance. And for us to, be, to have that what is called eternal vigilance. And the Nigerian government should be vigilant. The people in that region should also be vigilant, and the military should also be very, very vigilant. Nigeria's military has denied reports of a cross-border raid by Cameroon military in any part of the country. There had been reports that Cameroon had bombarded part of the country during which Boko Haram leader Bubakar Shikau was allegedly killed. But the defense headquarters in Monday used a Twitter handle to dismiss the claims. It insisted that all operations in Konjuga and the border part of the country are uh, by Nigerian troops. Why the military has uh, revealed that uh, 10 Boko Haram members have surrendered to troops in Kawori. This comes the day after five insurgents stand themselves in alongside their weapons at Konjuga. Defense headquarters say the insurgents are in custody for necessary debriefing. Away from that now, former Vice President Atika Abubakar is convinced that Jennifer's administration has not done enough to ensure a quick end to the war against insurgency. Speaking at a recent interactive media section in Abuja, the chieftain of the All Progressive Congress recalled that the Obasanjo administration smashed a similar group within a few weeks. I don't believe, as a country, we have done enough to secure uh, this country. This bunch of insurgents have been operating for nearly four or five years now. And knowing Nigeria, we used to pride ourselves with one of the best armed forces in this country. I really don't know where things have gone wrong. Is it the armed forces? Is it the political leadership? I just can't believe what is happening. Honestly, I am not in a position to explain this because I'm not in government. I don't know what is, but I don't believe this is a situation that Nigeria would not have dealt a very, very fatal blow within three to six months. Because I remember when we were in office, such a group that wanted to emerge in Yobe, we smashed that group within 
a couple of weeks. Completely. That such a group should be allowed four or five years operating in this country and then uh, saying they have even occupied some parts of the country and hosting flag and nobody is doing anything. Uh, please help me ask. You're watching Call TV News at 7. We'll take a short break now. Be back with more stories. Stay with us. There is an Ebola virus epidemic in some West African countries. The Nigerian government wants you to be aware and watch out against the spread of Ebola in your community. Help keep our country safe and watch out for severe cases of fever, headaches, diarrhea, chest and abdominal pain, sore throat, cough, red eyes and bleeding from the eyes, ears and nose. Especially when these symptoms are found in persons coming into Nigeria from other West African countries. Protect yourself. Wash your hands regularly with soap and running water or use a hand sanitizer. Avoid contact with the blood, urine, feces or saliva of animals like bats, monkeys, gorillas, chimpanzees or infected persons. The Ebola virus is deadly. Don't catch it. Don't spread it. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Glad to have your back. It's still called TV News at 7. Senate President David Mark has denied making comments credited to him by the All Progressive Congress on the possibility of postponing the 2015 elections. Mark says he never called for the elections to be postponed. The Senate President recalled that on the day senators resume from their annual recess, he argued that the issue of elections should be addressed during a debate and not election matters. Senator Mark consequently urged APC to desist from misleading the public. The People's Democratic Party is to embark on a nationwide tour to showcase its achievements since 1999. This, according to the party spokesman, Ulis Ametu, is to the less prove critics' claims of known performance by PDP government at the center. He said at a news conference in Abuja that the party is prepared to prove its performance in governance at all levels. Has mounted a negative campaign asking what the PDP has done in the last 15 years. Many of them have also queried the rationale behind the unanimous adoption of President Goodluck Jonathan as our sole can presidential candidate for the 2015 general elections. The People's Democratic Party will respond in a unique way. In the next couple of months, beginning from Monday, September 22nd, 2014, the People's Democratic the Publicity Directorate will embark on a comprehensive nationwide PDP performance tour to visit and publicize all projects executed by all PDP elected and appointed officials at the federal, state, and local government levels. Away from there now to Anambra, where the Supreme Court has upheld the emergence of Willie Obiano as the duly elected governor of Anambra State, uh, Governor Willie Obiano, in the November 16, 2013 election. A seven member panel headed by Justice Mahmoud Mohammed ruled that the two separate appeals filed by Chris Ngigi of the All Progressive Congress and Tony Way of the People's Democratic Party lacked merit. Speaking after the judgment, Governor Obiano's counsel maintained that the outcome was not a surprise. The court uh, endorsed the decisions of both the Court of Appeal and the Tribunal to the effect that um, uh, Chief Obiano uh, was duly qualified. And further, that um, the um, appellants who were petitioners at the Tribunal failed to establish the various acts of non compliance and irregularities that they alleged. So we are quite happy. Uh, it's uh, consistent with the previous decisions uh, of the Supreme Court. And in that sense, the uh, decision is um, very much acceptable. Now, there was confusion around the River State High Court premises as calls of policemen escorted the most senior judge of the court, Daisy Okocha, into the premises. 
The state high court has been under lock and key since June 10 due to the striking back to burn by judiciary workers in the state. The court premises was forcefully opened by security operatives. Over 50 armed policemen blocked the entrance of the two gates leading to the court premises with over 16 helos vans. And now legal practitioners say rules of court must be reviewed if delay in dispensation of justice is to be tackled in Nigeria. The call was made at a Supreme Court session to mark the beginning of the 2014 and 2015 legal year. The Nigerian Bar Association maintained that the review of the rules is necessary, especially now that Nigerian prisons are congested. For those in the legal profession, Monday marks the beginning of a new legal year in the country. And as usual, a special session was held at the Supreme Court presided over by the Chief Justice of Nigeria. First, it was time to appraise the previous legal year of 2013-2014 with the aim of setting course for the new year. Out of 1,288 cases, 146 were disposed while other cases were appealed against. According to the leadership of the Chief Justice, this is a setback for the judiciary. Therefore, attention in the form of an institutionalized pragmatic response must be carried out in several key sectors of the judiciary. Although the necessary actors needed to salvage the situation is not the judiciary alone. This conscious effort involves members of the legislative arm as well as the executive. The judiciary, however, remains at the forefront of the struggle. The judiciary can thus provide sustainable solution by implementing an improved court bill criteria and practice good organization and have law officers in the areas of speedy recording of court proceedings. May I also suggest the appointment of more judges and magistrates on merit, improved legal criteria and practice, alternative to pre-trial det detention, as well as introduction of pre-trial victim offender, mediation, and most importantly, ensure a speedy dispensation of criminal matters. The leadership of the Nigeria Bar Association also had its say. The causes of delays in hearing appeals must be addressed urgently. We appreciate the fact that most of our African court justices are hardworking men and women with a strong sense of purpose. But the situation with the Supreme Court is still in 2014, dealing with 2007 2008 appeals. It's a clear indication to us all that something is just not right. We must review our rules of court to make the processes faster. The Supreme Court and all divisions of the Court of Appeal with full complement of justices should run two full panels regularly to enable them to clear the backlog of appeals. The law should be settled, and even if two panels sit simultaneously and apply the law correctly, the outcome should be the, should be the same. NBA also stressed the need to develop a more accessible case management system and financial autonomy of the judiciary. All NBA chairmen in all states of the federation shall this week seek audience with state governors in the United States to push strongly for compliance with other provisions of the autonomy of the judiciary. Our next line of action will be dependent on the position of the government, but let it be known. Let it be known that the NBA will not compromise on this issue. There is, however, a consensus that restructuring the court system couldn't be coming at a better time, especially now that the 2015 general elections is just a few months away. Meanwhile, Chief Justice of Nigeria, Alma Mokhtaru, has won in 70 new senior advocates of Nigeria. They made a cut after clearance from the Legal Practitioners Privileges Committee from a list of 132 applicants. Justice Mokhtaru swore in the new senior advocate at a special Supreme Court section to mark the beginning of the 2014-15 legal year. The new advocate of Nigeria plays a critical role in the legal profession. He is to assist the courts attain justice and in doing so must espouse an impeccable standard of diligence, integrity, discipline and demonstrate the highest standard of advocacy. A keen understanding of how the law affects the daily lives of people 
and the promotion of the rule of law to facilitate the fair administration of justice in our great nation should be the primary responsibility of a senior advocate. Watching Call TV News at 7. After the break, the U.S. and five Arab allies have launched the first strikes against Islamic State in Syria. Find out more after this timeout. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. Outside Nigeria now, the U.S. and five Arab allies have launched a fresh strike against Islamic State as militants in Syria. The Pentagon says warplanes, drones and Tomahawk missiles were used to target several areas, including its stronghold. At least 70 militants were killed, Syrian activists say. Syria says it was stalled in advance, but the U.S. says it gave no warning of the timing of attacks on specific targets. The ice controls last week of Syria and Iraq. The U.S. has already launched about 190 airstrikes in Iraq since August. However, Monday's action has spanned the campaign against the militant group across the border into Syria. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad says to support any international effort to combat terrorism in Syria, state media report. Pentagon spokesman John Kerry confirmed the operation, saying U.S. military and partner nation forces had undertaken military action in Syria. U.S. Central Command says Sunni Arab countries barring Jordan, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the United Arab Emirates participated in or supported the strikes. And finally now, the military says Ukraine is preparing to withdraw heavy weaponry away from separatist rebel lines in the east. The two sides had agreed to set up a buffer zone in eastern Ukraine more than a fortnight after a shaky ceasefire came into force. Although this truce is still in place, clashes have continued around the cities of Donetsk and Mariupol. More than 3,000 people have died since fighting broke out in the two regions of Donetsk and Lugansk in April. Ukraine's parliament passed a bill last week granting three years and several to part of the Donetsk and Lugansk regions, a decision condemned by some uh, prime minister as capitulation. Under the terms of the nine-point deal agreed in Belarus, both the pro-Russian rebels and Ukrainian forces are to pull back the heavy artillery 15 kilometers from the line of engagement, creating a 30-kilometer buffer zone. Well, and that does it uh, for Call TV News at 7. Many thanks for watching. I am Franco Manape. Don't forget, join us at 9.45 for a primetime bulletin. Bye for now.